was, Jesus is our rest. But he pointed to Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in, for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So it's talking about your spiritual rest. And then Alan Parr here said that the Sabbath just looks different than when it was outlined in the Old Testament, that it should be up to each man how to decide how they are going to find their rest, how to utilize their rest. His seventh point specifically said that the principle of rest should still apply to us today. But there's a catch. We all kind of suck at it. I mean, I can point fingers all day long, and are you even going to be offended if I point this out to you? Because um, it's well known and acknowledged, at least in my life and in the lives of most everyone I know, that it's a continual struggle to stop and take that moment. And <clears throat> God knew that it would be an issue from the very beginning. And I mean the very beginning. Like I read this part and I thought about it, and I was like, that actually blows my mind. The very beginning, the beginning of time. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all the work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. When he was creating the universe, he said, we will need rest, and he built it into the framework of creating the universe. Blows my mind. <laughs> I hadn't fully thought that through before. The importance of rest is so important that you can't escape the fact that God built it that way. So I'm going to back up a little bit now that I outlined the video things. Um, at the start of when Alan asked me to, to do the, the message, I mulled over some ideas for a couple of weeks. I have an app on my phone that I can um, text notes to myself, and, and that way I can remember things because I barely have a brain. Um, I even actually had a vacation, a little two-day vacation in, in those couple weeks. So I was thinking about doing something with the title Cruise Control, which started with a little parable I heard which I'll read here in a second, it's call, it calls into focus the minimum you do to proclaim the promises of God. It has nothing whatsoever to do with resting, but that's where I started, and because of the circumstances of day-to-day -day life, I landed on resting. And not just rest, but that rest that comes with peace, with joy, and that little something extra that softens the edges and lets you put everything else into the background. That parable I heard was from one of those quick little videos that pop up on your phone when you're looking at social media. <clears throat> a lady was railing about us Christians always pushing our ideas about the Bible on others. She exclaimed in exasperated tones, could we please just stop? Can we just live our lives? You live your life. You do your Bible thing. She'll live her life. Just stop and not push it on others. Just let them live. <laughs> and let us live, and live and let live, she was railing, right? And then a quick cut to an evangelist, and she goes, wait, no, there's a catch. The live and let live speech, these other people that you're talking about, they're our friends and our families. Just think about it like this. If we had someone coming over to hang out, but we happen to have a snake problem in our yard, wouldn't we warn our friends? Of course, obviously. This issue would warrant a conversation at the very least. And if you're anything of a talker, that conversation would involve strategies for navigating the walk up to the house. There would be stories of past issues. There would be plans for dealing with this in the, in the future. The whole gamut would be discussed over lunch before they came to visit your house. It would be an event. I mean, can you picture it? <clears throat> we would be talking about all the snakes and the issues and, and definitely it would, you wouldn't not say something. So, would you do less for your friends, your family, this, per this visitor, about the Bible, about God, about the joy, the love, and the grace that awaits them, the peace and the purpose that you yourself are filled with? 
We do not warn them of the, of the dangers of dark places and, and suspicious alleyways. These things matter, and we can see them highlighted in sharp relief because of where we are in our Christian walk. So no, we can't live and let live. We are in a spiritual battle. So we go, we do, we press on. We're a light in the shadows. It's all exciting and exhilarating, especially if you've been on a journey or a walk. And, but we're not new here. We live here every day. And we also have whole lives that we live. Jobs, homes, relationships, activities, VBS, um, camping, responsibilities, we have pets, and plus we have a knack for filling in all our blank spaces. It sounds exhausting, actually, and that's where I got in the cruise control message. I was like, oh, that sounds exhausting. <laughs> At least on paper it sounded exhausting. And here, this, that's where I moved into a message on rest. John 10.10 10 says that Jesus died for us so that we may have a life and have it abundantly. God wants us to enjoy our everyday lives. Abundantly, he says. But are we doing too much? Have we gotten too busy? And is God telling us to take a breath? Do you save time for resting, for finding moments of peace? Here's a couple of signs that you might be doing too much. You know that you should be doing something, but you don't have the time or energy to do it. That may be a sign that God is saying to you you're doing too much. If busyness is pulling you away from the presence of Christ, that is a sign that you're doing too much. An example of that is Martha. Um, when Jesus came over and Mary was learning from Jesus, Jesus had to rebuke her, saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious. You are troubled about many things. But only one thing is truly necessary. Yes, serving is a command in the Bible. Yet when it comes to listening to Jesus or doing something good, we still must choose Jesus. And three, if your current obligations are causing you to miss golden opportunities, this is a sign that you could be doing too much. This one thing, number three might need an example, I think. If you have obligations that you use to, that you use to prevent you from seizing something presented to you for or from God, we need to be prepared for when God does bring those opportunities to your life. Otherwise, you'll miss them. I feel like I jumbled that. Um, so Luke 9, 57 through 62 says, As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first I must go bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and pro proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me so say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. <coughs> So if you say, okay, but first. Yes, God, but first. That's, that was the point of that one. This always seemed a little harsh to me, but I think the point is that there are always going to be some barriers to you seizing opportunities that God puts in front of you. There is usually, usually, if not always, a sacrifice we have to make, even if the sacrifice is just time. That's a consideration we know and we make when we become a follower of Christ. So if, you're going to, if you are doing too many things that are preventing you from taking advantage of these open doors, <clears throat> this is a sign that God is telling you you're doing too much. Insert a reminder that we have VBS this week. There's volunteer sheets out there if you want to help out in any way. So... Work hard when God leads you to work hard. But when busyness is pulling you away from the presence of Christ, this is a sign God is telling you that you are doing too much. We are partners with God. We have our part, and he has his part in everything he calls us to do. When we do our part 
and we try to do his part, that's when we are living a stressed out, worry, fear-filled, anxiety, frustration, no peace, no joy life. I have an example that just happened. Have you ever gone camping? Yes, I assume. Um, have you ever done it alone? A friend of mine recently decided she wanted to go camping by herself. She was determined. Also, she was a little nervous about it, about the wildlife or maybe the neighbors she may encounter. Nothing of note occurred when she went camping. <clears throat> Not really, but she did say she was exhausted. She was on the edge. She was on edge and she was tired and she, because she had tried to be aware at all times. I thought this sounded exactly like my point today. She tried to do it all, even nighttime guard duty. Real rest is found in trusting the person who is in control of all things that you can't control, like putting your head down at night in the middle of the woods knowing someone is on guard duty. That there is always someone who has your back. Finding true rest in Jesus frees us to enjoy things in the here and the now. When you find yourself getting frustrated or feeling overwhelmed like you can't do it anymore, remember to stop, get your focus back on him, and enter into his rest once again. It is not an accident that God rested on the seventh day. He created rest, and he created us his image bearers to desire time for rest and time for enjoyment. Our <laughs> sin has interrupted this. We either pursue rest to the point of laziness or we, we refuse to rest to the point of exhaustion or illness. <coughs> Logan. <laughs> either way, true rest eludes us. Have you noticed the increasing amount of products and services that are supposed to save us time? Yet, at the same time, many of us are burned out and restless and haven't saved any time. We are still too busy to rest because those products aren't working. What we need is not a new time-saving gadget, but to find the rest that Jesus gives us. On the seventh day, God rested. His rest was not due to... to his rest was not due to fatigue, nor should we equate it to laziness or inactivity. Laziness is not rest, and that's why there's no joy in it. God's rest is his invitation into time of enjoyment. God created us to enjoy him and his amazing creation. Remember, the second video, the principle of rest still applies. The New Testament never said, full stop, we don't do this anymore. But to remember that taking the time, you need to find a moment to settle into spiritual rest or spiritual peace. Did you know that Jesus taught his disciples that it was important to take vacations? Mark 6, 30 through 32, Jesus' disciples traveled from town to town telling others about God and his love for them. They traveled every day preaching, teaching, and healing the sick. They worked so hard that they often didn't have time to stop, to eat, or to sleep. They were very tired. When Jesus saw how tired they were, he said to them, come with me to a quiet place and get some rest. <clears throat> the Bible says, so they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. I think it is important to notice a couple of things about what the Bible says here. <clears throat> First, Jesus said, come with me. When we take a vacation, we need to remember to take Jesus with us. Some people never give Jesus a thought when they go on vacation. We should always include him in all we do, even on vacation. Second, the Bible says the disciples went away to a quiet place. Their main purpose was to rest and renew their strength. Some people plan a vacation so full that they come home and they're more tired than when they left. There are three types of rest, physical, mental, and spiritual. Spiritual rest is the main point here. Spiritual rest ju is just as important as mental and physical, but probably the most overlooked. Jesus had a very clear message regarding our need for rest. While teaching in, towns of, in the towns of Galilee, Jesus told his followers in Matthew 11:28 through 30, 
Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Rest for your souls sounds amazing, so peaceful. And that rest can only be found through Jesus. But you have to do something before you will get to that soulful rest. It is not just dropped on you in the middle of the night like a heavenly sleeping pill. Jesus says in verse 28 that you have to come to him. If you seek this rest, this peace, you have to go to him and get it, and he will give it to you. It is only found in him, and only he can give it. And he gives it freely to anyone that asks. It is a part of all that he has already promised, eternal life, salvation, deliverance from sin, all of these things that we, know are, we have known since we are his children. But the peace and rest are waiting for us also. If we will only ask, then the spiritual rest and comfort of the mental and physical will fall into place as they should, just as God perfectly planned for it for us that is how the rest should really work, to his glory. So that's the application. Start with spiritual rest and go from there. The dictionary says rest is the ceasing of work or movement. But I like the definition of rest is unhurried time. That sounds like a perfectly peaceful day. Unhurried time. One website listed the five R's for resting. Rejoice. Take time to recount the blessings of God and rejoice in his promises. Reflect on where you are in life and where you should be. Dream a little. Relax. Live in the moment. Relate to others, relationships. Spend time with friends, family. Be fully engaged and reconnect in the moment. And rest. Stop and breathe. And that's the message. Go enjoy life abundantly. Find time to rejoice, reflect, relax, relate, and rest. Like Jesus said in Matthew, seek God and you will find rest for your souls. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the abundant life we are blessed to be living. Keep us mindful of the fact that and gently nudge us back to you whenever life starts to fill up. We want to put you first always. Help us to slow down and enjoy unhurried time. Bring us peace, joy, and rest. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.